Welcome. Welcome to managing your email, getting control of your inbox. Today's discussion focuses on how to manage, get control of your email inbox. As most of us are using email consistently every day, all day, to communicate, to share information, to share media, um, we are overwhelming each other's inbox. And if you are like me a few months ago, I had no control over my inbox. I would get emails all day from, from different advertisers, from different companies, from friends, from family, from business associates, and it was all just coming into one folder. So I had to learn because it was becoming a bit too much. I had to learn how to get control of this email because it was becoming overwhelming. You know, it was just a bit too much. So I just want to take a quick moment here and welcome you. The first topic we're going to look at is your email behavior. And the question that I always start out with in all of my technology coaching sessions is, how are you handling your email? Are you obsessing over it? When you get an email, do you stop what you're doing to glance at your smartphone or tablet or PC because you need to see who their email is from? Um, you're becoming obsessive when you're in a meeting and you have to stop what you're doing, stop saying what you're saying, and look at that technology to see who is emailing you. Do you feel compelled to immediately answer all emails, even if it's something that's not urgent? Do you have your mobile phone device with you on your nightstand? Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. Why do we have our cell phones on our nightstand when we're getting ready to go to sleep? Why do we have them on? Not only do we have them by our nightstand, but we have them on. Who's going to email us at 3 in the morning? And if they email you at 3 in the morning, are they expecting an immediate response? Well, the answer to that could be very well be yes. Um, Here's another thing. In the middle of the night, if you get up to go to the bathroom or get up to get uh, something to drink, do you pick up your mobile phone or your tablet and take it with you to go get something to drink? If you're doing that, you're obsessing. Next point. Do you take your mobile phone with you to dinner? and have it on your table, and you're checking your email, and you're texting people while you're eating dinner with your family, or your friend or an associate. How about this one, which is a common occurrence today. Everybody who has a mobile device is at the dinner table, and everybody is looking down at their mobile device while they're eating, and they're not communicating with each other, they're not looking at each other, they're on their technology. There comes a time when you just have to shut it off, okay? And at dinner is definitely one of those times. The last one that we're going to talk about today, and there's a few more, but this is the last one for today. How do you feel when you send an email and you don't get an immediate response? Are you on the verge of a panic attack? <laughs> if any of these criterias or these points fit you, then you are obsessing. So here's a few strategies that um, can help you begin to manage your inbox. Number one, schedule. Set up a specific time of the day when you check your email. Is it the morning, the afternoon, or the evening? Depending on your work schedule or what you do in your day will help you get the best answer in this area. I schedule my email um, maintenance or my email uh, activity first thing in the morning I do 15-minute sessions, so between um, 8 o'clock in the morning and 8.15, sometimes I have to go over depending on, you know, the content of what I'm checking. Sometimes it requires a little more time, but on the whole, I'm only on that email for 15 minutes a day. Now, that's five days a week. Then around lunchtime, I will check again to see if there's anything urgent. So that's my schedule. So it's automatic. I, I check my email around that time. 
I turn it off. This is a very important strategy because if you don't learn how to turn off your technology, it will overwhelm you and it will take over you. Turn it off. You're home with your family. The workday is over. Turn it off because it's an email. It's going to be there in the morning. They don't disintegrate. It's not like Mission Impossible should you choose to accept. You know, it, it, it will be there in the morning. The last one, uh, turn off notifications. Now, now, this is something that is a pet peeve. In the middle of the night, you hear bing, bing, bing. And if you're a light sleeper and you hear that sound that tells you incoming, incoming, what was really worse was some time ago when the guy used to say, you've got mail. Oh, that was the worst. So now, turn off those notifications because if you hear it, you are going to be compelled to feel like you have to answer it. Now, you know yourself better than I know you. So I say turn it off. Tell your spouse, your children, turn them off. Because if you hear your spouse's notification go off and you don't know that it's his, you'll automatically think it's yours. Next one. This is how to use your time effectively. This is your goal. Delete. Get rid of those emails that are old and have no archiving reason. And here's my question, and be honest. Do you really, really need it? I have emails before I started managing my email. I have emails going back to 2010 that I have never accessed for any reason. And it's because I'm obsessive. It's like I'm thinking, I can't delete this. I'm going to need it. But the bottom line is this. You know you're not going to need it. So delete it. Clean it out. It's like purging. Create folders with labels. I have a folder for every client. I have a folder for everything that I'm doing, all of my businesses, so that when an email comes in, it automatically filters into that folder. The next one is set up rules. If you're using any email clients such as uh, Google, uh, Gmail, um, if you're using Outlook, if you're using Mozilla, with, with, uh, Firefox, whatever email client you're using, there is the ability to filter even Yahoo with Hotmail, all of them, you can filter. So you have to go to your settings and find the filter and then set up filters. And filters mean like this. When an incoming email comes in, let's say for this particular class, I might have managing your email as the sub as the parent folder. And then I will have registrants as a as a child folder. So that when somebody comes in, they're seeing um, my my emails automatically filter to that folder. And it works. So that means that it's not something that I need to look at immediately. It can wait a couple of hours. So I'll know, but I'll see a little number that will indicate or it'll be bold. So there will be some kind of uh, physical indication as to an incoming email in that particular folder. Scheduling emails, D-A-F-R-S, daily, AM check, filter, respond, and schedule. This is the strategy. Check your inbox in the early in the morning. Like I said, I do 15 to 20 minutes. Um, filter based on priority. If you're working on a project and you have a deadline, then that has to take precedence. If it's something like a friend saying, hey, can we get together tomorrow? You can put that aside because you know that you're going to respond, but that doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. You must respond to high priority emails. You must respond to medium priority emails. And you must respond to low priority emails. You notice I, I never, never said don't respond. You always have to respond. It is one of the most rudest things you can do to somebody to not respond to their email. So make sure that you are responding according to the priority. And then you have to schedule time to clean out your box. Okay? And this is critical. Just like your, your clothing closet, your clothing drawer, your, your files in, in the old-fashioned file cabinet, you always have to clean it out because it becomes overstuffed. So you have to speak, you have to set time aside to clean it out. Email etiquette. Now here's the oath. These are feelings and expectations. In order to become a better emailer, I do solemnly swear 
to adhere to the unwritten rules of email engagement. And here's the etiquette. Number one, don't ignore, respond. Set up an expectancy time on when you will be able to reply. Maybe it's 24 hours, maybe it's 48 hours, and that's a fair window of response. Put in your signature block. I will respond um, in 24 hours. As I said here, thank you for your email. I will respond within 48 hours. If you require a more immediate response, give me a call. Here you're putting a call to action and you're letting your, your, uh, your people know that if it's something urgent, please call me. <laughs> Number two, respect people's time. Oh, keep emails brief. Emails are not thesis statements. Say what you have to say quickly. Use bulleted lists. Include one line of the sender's text so they know what you're talking about. Now, this goes especially for email threads. When there's this long thread, a conversation thread that's gone between departments or between friends or between family, when you're responding to that email, make sure that you write something that relates to the email you're responding to because if the person is scrolling up and down, scrolling, 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 it, it's going to get lost. So to keep things on track, to respect people's time, just say, you know, according to what was said in the earlier email about us getting together at 5 o'clock, I agree that 5 o'clock is the best time. Done. Um, list action items first. Very, very important. Do not put your action items on the end of the email. You're assuming the person receiving your email is reading every single word. That's often not the case. People are on the move. Sometimes they're reading email while they're walking. Sometimes they're reading email, you know, in, in, in uh, on the train, in the taxi. You can't expect them to scroll all the way down all the time. So if it's urgent, if it's an action item, it goes on the top of the email. Clearly indicate deadlines and expectations. If you, if you need something done tomorrow, you need to be clear and say that. Don't say whenever you get a chance. <laughs> Bomb, never say that. Um, state urgency early on, we talked about that. And I'll make questions specific and clear. How about using a question mark? There you go. Etiquette one, beware of tone. People are reading what you're saying and they're interpreting it based on their experience. It's the only way we can do it. If you are writing in a particular tone, it's going to be received that way and it's often not good. Never, ever, ever type in caps. Every um, email client today has email editing tools. So if you need to, ex to emphasize something, use the bold feature. Um, okay, I'm going to have to contradict what I just said. Sometimes you have to use caps, but just know that caps are perceived as yelling. Caps are perceived as being rude and shouting. So don't type in caps. Okay. Beware of over formatting your fonts. Enough is enough already. A bold here, an italic there, that's just enough. Okay. Um, beware of fancy fonts. Don't use the chiller font when you want to say something, you know, scary. Because not every computer has the chiller font. So yours is going to translate into a different font depending on what the receiver has on their computer. When you move someone to BCC, let them know, especially when it's an introduction email. I know it has happened to you because it happens to me countless times. And even though I'm so organized, I still get this happening to me. People will BCC me and bring me in on a conversation thread. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, what am I supposed to do with this information, right? So just like, give me a call. Tell me, say, hey, listen, I BCC'd you on that email. Or send, forward me an email and send it fresh. 
Send a follow-up email within one week if you have not received a response. Say, hey, you know, I emailed you a couple of weeks ago. Um, but did you get a chance to look through it? Um, angry emails should wait at least 24 hours before sending. That's your cool down time. So I know when people send you something and they fire you up, you're very quickly, you want to just say, listen, enough is enough already. <laughs> My advice is take your emotional hands off that keyboard, step back, walk away, and calm down. Because once that email goes up, it is very, very difficult to retrieve. So this is the point where I ask you if you have any questions for me. Um, I hope that I've helped you with some brief strategies on managing your email. I am Rafika Soris. I am your technology coach. You can reach me at rsoris. Um, I'm going to go to the welcome page. You can reach me at rsories at rafikacs.com. Um, like me on Facebook and my, my Facebook page, which is Rafika Consultants and Services. We give daily tips or weekly tips on email management and other technology issues. So I thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you.